What's up guys, welcome back if you're new to my channel. Hey there. My name is Morgan, I'm a recent UX UI design bootcamp graduate from Career Foundry, and I make videos documenting my journey from digital marketing into the UX design field, and I offer advice where I can. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a little bit more dolled up for this video, and that's because I wanted to look good for my channel's very first sponsor. Big thank you to Be Usable for sponsoring this video. If you don't already know, Be Usable is a UX research and analysis tool that essentially tells you everything that you need to know about your users and how they interact with your website. Before I get into how it works, I want to let you guys know that Be Usable is giving my followers a one month free trial of their basic plan. So that's up to 100,000 page views and it's worth about 87 US dollars a month. So if you have a case study or a freelance project that you're working on that you think this tool would be useful for, I would jump at it. It. The link is down below. So if you don't understand why a tool like this is important, let me explain. Businesses often don't understand their customers. It's just a fact because even through user interviews, customers don't even understand themselves. There's a huge difference between what a user says they need versus what they actually need because it's really difficult to self-evaluate. User interviews are great, but actually seeing how users behave naturally and how they naturally interact with your website without knowing that they're being evaluated is extremely effective. I've I used analytic tools before, particularly Google Analytics, because I was in marketing. A big struggle was not just the steep learning curve that comes with using it, learning how to use it, how to filter everything, how to organize everything, but then what was most difficult was trying to explain the data that you collected to others. And oh my god, be usable is so much better. That is my honest opinion. For those of you who have been with me for a little bit now, you know that I am a very honest person and I'm very open about the reality of things and be usable so much better. So I'm going to stop rambling and let's get into how it actually works. So first what you actually want to do is obviously get the URL of the screen that you want to track and then you want to find the correct URL match type. So if you look off to the side, they have a little diagram of what each URL match type actually means and I'm gonna go with starts match and then you just click confirm match and you just confirm that these are the pages that you want to follow okay and then next and so I'm going to create a group and it's going to be UGT and the page name is just going to be the home page so here we have the number of page views to analyze. I'm just gonna go with unlimited. It's a small business, so we don't get a crazy amount of page views. Okay, and we're just gonna register. And then we're going to copy this code. And I use WordPress to create this client's website. And I do have permission to be doing all of this and be showing it on YouTube. I use WordPress with Elementor. And I just look for the HTML widget and I just plug in the code at the top of the page. And it really is that simple. <laughs> and then I just go to the website just to make sure that nothing was altered. Okay, so I've been running this program for about two weeks now. And let's see what we got. So we see that the July page views we have so far, I've only been running it for about 10 to 12 days, I think, at this point. So we have gotten 210 page views and we'll just go right into report. So there are four features that I specifically want to talk about today. And the first one I want to talk about is the scroll heat map. So the scroll heat map essentially shows you how far down the screen users are scrolling. Red represents the most users. And as we scroll down, we see that it gradually changes to cooler tones, representing fewer users until we eventually reach black. Obviously the top of the page is always going to be red because that's the part every user lands on. This is a very cool feature because it shows you what your users are actually seeing. And we designed something and may not take into account how few users actually scroll down a screen. So in the case of this website, we have important contact information down below as well as information for trainers that is visible on our desktop site, but it's not on mobile. So people aren't scrolling down that far to see the important information. So we need to take a better mobile first approach by having the become a trainer information higher on the site because that is our target market. And that's just the little information I got from just glancing at that now. On the same screen, you'll see the attention graph. That's this line here. So as I hover my mouse over those areas, you'll see this box appear. And this is the attention graph. The attention graph gives a bit more information 
about what users are actually paying attention to. So are they browsing? Are they looking for something specific? And what I really like is that it shows us how long users are spending on a certain part of the screen. So if we had a lot of written information here, how long would people actually spend reading it? Do they see a lot of text and just move past it? This is the importance of using the attention graph because it helps you make important decisions moving forward. So I would also like to set up, we have a blog on this website, so I would like to see how far are people actually reading? Are they just reading the previews? Are they reading the entire article? That would be important for me to know. Or on the shopping page, are people just going with what they first see? So we would need to see how would we arrange that for certain users. Something very cool that I do want to mention about the scroll heat map and the attention graph is that you can filter by referrer. So the referrer is where your users are coming from. So if they're coming directly, if they're coming from Google, are they coming from social media, it lets you know. So that's a huge thing. Knowing where your users are coming from and how they interact with your site is a key piece of information for user research. So from this, we know that almost half of our desktop users come from Google probably looking up personal training facilities and found us and are visiting the site for the first time. This is important to know because it determines what kind of information we need to display. However, when we go to mobile, which is almost two thirds of our users, we see that 40% of our users come directly to our site, which means that they just type in the URL. So they've more than likely visited our site before or they're already a member. Now look at this. You see how the majority of users coming directly to our site don't make it past the first fold, and the fold is the average screen size. So it's what's directly shown on your screen without scrolling, essentially. But like, you see how the majority of users directly coming to our site don't make it past the first fold, but if we switch to Google being our referrer, the scroll map changes. And we can make an educated guess that users that come from Google are trying to find more information on the homepage, while direct users probably just go right to the menu or right to the shopping cart. And then that's confirmed when we check and uncheck new and returning users, and confirmed even further when we go back to desktop. Hey guys, Editing Morgan here. I realized that I forgot to show you that you can actually compare by referrer. So this is a really cool feature because you can obviously compare the same device uh, and see maybe direct versus Google. And you can see the difference between the screens. You can also do returning versus new plus the different referrers. You can also test different devices. So you could do desktop versus mobile. You could do new users coming directly to your desktop screen versus mobile returning users from social media. So just a really cool feature of theirs where you can get even more information and make decisions based on who you're trying to attract to your website. The next cool thing I want to talk about is path plots. The usable uses machine learning to draw the in-page customer journey. So this shows you in a really clean and easily explainable way how users navigate through this page as well as finding the key content that generates conversions. If you don't know what a conversion is, it's essentially when a user takes a desired act on your website. So that could be signing up for a newsletter or adding something to their cart uh, or just clicking a button. And of course you can still use filters like new versus returning users, users by referrer, and you can even see the average group versus the fan group. Hey guys, editing Morgan again. So I just wanted to clarify what a fan is. So you can read over on the right side that a fan is a consumer group that can be potentially converted to purchasers. So they're in the top 25% of the activity range and basically the content that they focus on, you can infer that that is the content that would get conversions because they are the people who are being the most active on your website. Lastly, I wanna talk about the live heat map. So what's the difference between the scrolling heat map and the live heat map? The live heat map allows you to go into dynamic elements. So for example, this menu here on mobile, we can see how many people tapped it, but what did they do once it opened up? Let's move over to desktop. We have a carousel area with different buttons, so we can see that the become a member button was clicked and the become a trainer button was not, big problem. But we can see that with the live heat map when we couldn't see that with the scrolling heat map because the scrolling heat map is a screenshot. In the live heat map, we can see where people are clicking, we can see moving is hovering, uh, exposure, interest, and of course we can still sort by referrer and then new and returning users. 
So even though this is a sponsored video, I actually do plan on using Be Usable for a future case study that I have coming up. I'm going to record and document the process for you guys of how I actually work. You will see me using Be Usable because it's really incredible. I highly encourage you to use the link down below to get your free month of the basic plan because I will be using it. Alright guys, that's it for today. I hope that you learned a little bit more about how important user research is today and I hope that you check out Be Usable. Thank you again to Be Usable for sponsoring this video and I will talk to you guys next week.